Hello my friends, let's start this video from the front lines review because we have the major change in Bakhmut. The Wagner army moved quite a lot recently and what they're doing, they're using the remains of their ammunition right here, right now. And let's go to the timeline. It was the update for the weekend, so it was uh, one day ago and the latest update shows us not a good picture because Russians are very close to Yahine over here, they moved a lot and also they were able to push from the south over here and from the open direction and a little bit enter the residential area of the Bahmut city itself as you can see the gray area goes all across the river over here that divides the city into two parts it means that here we have the risk that this area would be occupied by the Wagner soldiers but still it may not happen and later in this video I'll tell you why. The main thing here that Russia bogged down near to Ivanovska and Chasovyar and so we have the main supply line to the Bakhmut city for Ukrainian forces. But of course I'm quite concerned about the north direction and the south one. Russia wants to take the Bakhmut into the small ring over here encircling the city but still with the road of Available to the Chasov Yar, they cannot do it. And here we have the tactical map, and for sure Russia already crossed this road over here near to Yahine. We know about it. Still, they are unable to take this village under their control, and they are very close to the Bakhmut over here. So I think this map is a little bit outdated. About the city itself, you can see that Russia was able to capture the north east side, the residential area, the private sector, as well as the east side of the city, also some of the quartals but they are moving forward and as I say to you the battle is over here somewhere in this part of the city that is being divided by this river. The major part of the Ukrainian forces are in this part of the city controlling it but mainly we moved out and just small groups remain in this part of the city to fight against Russians in the residential areas. So I wouldn't say that the situation now deteriorates significantly for our forces but in future I'm very concerned about this part of the city maybe it could be occupied by the Wagner soldiers and they could present it as the victory on 24th of the February. All right, and why do I think that Ukraine may take some of the ground back in Bakhmut or start immediately the counterattack on the south? Basically because of this article, it is some sort of the leak that is published by Politico. And it tells that the White House administration wants to see the achievements from President Zelensky and the army of Ukraine. It says that the Biden administration has urgently pressed Vladimir Zelensky administration to consolidate its gains and perhaps launch its own counter-strike or counter-attack. So why do they do like that? Basically to show the European neighbors that Ukraine got some sort of the achievements and it needs more help, military support, etc. Because for now we see that not all of the promised Leopard 2 tanks will be delivered to Ukraine on time. Before we spoke about 130 tanks that should have been delivered till April and now they say about the 50 tanks. Which is quite low for any sort of the country attack and some of the countries start to tell that they will send Leopard 1 tanks instead of Leopard 2. And yes, they say that they will send more units of the Leopard 1 but you cannot compare those two tanks. Leopard 1 is not good really. If you compare it with the modern day Russian tanks, Leopard 2 is much better. The military aviation question is now floating in the air and no one said promptly that they will support Ukraine with the military jets. However, there are some of the good news about the artillery deal that the European Union will do commonly to support Ukraine. They want to have the joint purchase of 155 mm artillery shells that would cost 4 billion euros. Yes, yeah, sorry, we have dollars here and this question is almost solved. Obviously, we may not trust this resource, but in just a few days we're gonna see whether it was true or false. Because this article says that there should be some sort of a movement from Ukrainian forces till the time Biden visits Poland. Some great news about the French IMX-10RC tanks, if you may call them tanks, 
but definitely they look like the tanks but without the caterpillars so they're gonna be delivered the next weekend to ukraine and france was the first country that supported ukraine with this tank looking vehicle well we may call this tank really and united kingdom was the first country to supply the heavy armor tanks like challenger 2 to Ukraine. And later other countries agreed to supply Leopard 2 tanks. I'm closely looking at the situation in Moldova. There are some of the protests organized by the Russian Federation. So they want to dismiss the pro-Western president and now they have the new government because their later government was dismissed and the new prime minister says that it's time to solve the issue with Transnistria. Basically demilitarize the region taking control over it. And I personally think that it's the great time for Moldova to act and take back their annexed territory. Now the Russian army is very weak, they cannot use the aviation to support Transnistria and also they cannot send the reinforcements because Transnistria basically locked between Moldova and Ukraine. Now there are some talks about the new security guarantees for Ukraine. The project now is in development process and should be ready until July, as Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister of UK, says. And you see that NATO countries should unite and make a security pledge by July. The United States Secretary Blinken says that Russia lost around 200,000 soldiers in the war that they started one year ago. Here we are speaking about the total losses together with the wounded personnel. Iran is in a close proximity to get the uranium-90 that would be enough to produce the nuclear weapons. Where is the International Atomic Agency? Where are they looking at or looking for? Because their last report was that Iran was able to get uranium 60 which is far away from 84 as bloomberg says and basically iran doesn't have the centrifugal devices to get the uranium 94 so someone helped iran and i guess me and you understand who did it the nato general commander of the european joint forces christopher cavoli supported the supplies to ukraine the f-16s fighter jets together with attack ms rockets yes christopher is one of the main generals of nato but the main decision will be taken by politicians unfortunately and finally just for love the super special forces of the belarus army the belarusian spetsnaz here let's see this video Oh, they're so funny. I wonder why some of them are half naked and some wear the sniper costumes. And this guy who cracked the brick on the partner's head. Uh, guys are just clowns over there. I think this is some sort of the Belarusian flash mob or something. Because we have tons of videos like that from their side. Not from Russia, but from Belarusia. And now please press the like for this video. Also, if you want to support my job, there are some of the links in the video description for you to do so. Thank you so much for your support. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are. And... Have a great time.